जय भीम नो बुद्धाय नमो तस् भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा so uh, today we will be uh, continuing our ongoing classes on the buddha and his dhamma and today uh, we are going to uh, study from the page number 400 onwards which is uh, the book 4 of the buddha and his dhamma and we are into the last part of this book where we are studying uh, the buddha's uh, teachings or sermons on on various aspects of his uh, dhamma and uh, we have so far uh, looked at uh, how the buddha has uh, talked about uh, how to maintain character how to uh, live a righteous life then we have seen the sermons on nibbana and uh, now we are looking into uh, what the buddha described as the sermons on dhamma which is section 5 of the part 4 of the book 4 of the buddha and dhamma so we will be uh, covering today uh, four uh, subsections of this uh, section so uh, the uh, subsection 4 goes like this and titled like this as it is not what you eat that makes you holy isn't it because uh, people most of the talk times uh, talk about uh, you know the purity of life in terms of what they eat or you know in terms of uh, various ways in which people talk about the purity of life but here uh, in the buddha and his dhamma baba sahib ambedkar has uh, taken from uh, a very few important suttas from the pali tripitaka and uh, tried to present to us as to what constitute what he calls the noble life or a, or a holy life so uh the uh, we are going to go through the uh, subsection 4 which is titled as i said it is not what you eat that makes you holy and then subsection 5 not food but evil actions that matter and then we will be looking at not enough is outward washing and uh, what is holy life so in 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 a way we are going to cover the four sub parts of buddha and dhamma why this section is important because we have seen that uh, the humanity or the world is caught up in the various notions of what constitute the holy life or a pure life you know what makes a person a holy person or what makes a person uh, a good person a just person or or a person who who is you know devoted to the good life so here you know there are a lot of conceptions about what constitute a good life and some people argue on the basis that if you eat some kind of a special food you know you will be a holy person or if you if you if you if you if you if you wash yourself with some holy water you will be some kind of a holy person so you know people are always talking about the outward forms of uh, rituals in terms of what makes a good life or a holy life but here the buddha is very clear almost categorically clear as to what constitute the holy life so as often we do in our classes i am going to read through some of the sections of the buddha and his dhamma and then i am going to reflect upon some of the aspects of 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 what constitute the holy life so the scene of this sutta takes place uh, in 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 you know in uh, in an interaction with with a brahmin who happened to meet the lord and raised the question of the effect of food on a man's character isn't it so the the person is arguing that the food has certain effect on man's character so he says the millet grain palm nuts pulse bulbs and welding shoots this diet rightly got ever prompts the good life it is eating carry on that is bad isn't it so uh, in a way uh, it has been argued with the buddha that you know uh the the food with which constitute of the millet grain palm nuts pulse bulbs and wilding shoots this diet rightly got ever prompts the good life so the, you see in a way arguing that the food makes your character what you eat makes your character and uh, eating carry on or decaying dead flesh of an animal is a bad thing 
Now you see what the, what the food is bad or good. It can be determined by various aspects in terms of the health, in terms of the nutrition, in terms of food, in terms of as medicine and so on and so forth. So there are many ways by which you know we can we can we can look at food, but to equate food with character is something that the Buddha did not accept. And that's what the Buddha goes on further saying, replying to what has been asked. The Blessed One replied, Though you say you touch no carry-on, you eat choice dishes made with flesh of birds. I ask what you term carry-on. So that is what is being asked to the Buddha. That, you know, the Buddha is accused of eating flesh by, by this person. And he says that, you know, tell us what is the meaning of the word carry-on. And now the Buddha goes on explaining what he is what he meant by the word carry on. So you see, in a, in a very characteristic way, in a very clear way, the Buddha has, uh, you know, defined what is uh, the, uh, you know, the character, you know, it, it, it doesn't const constitute of what you eat. So you see the verse number four goes like this, killing and maiming, stripes, bonds, theft, lies, fraud, deceit, adultery. Not meats, but these are carry on. You know, these are ill, you know, ill smelling, foul smelling things. You know, you, we should not consume these things. What should we not consume? Killing and miming. We should not resort to killing and miming. Stripes, bonds, you know, enslaving people, putting them in, in, in the bondage, theft, lies, fraud, deceit, adultery. This is the decaying food. This is the decaying dead flesh of you know, an animal, you know, what you eat per se doesn't determine your character. What determines your character is very clear. Killing and maiming, stripes, bonds, theft, lies, fraud, deceit, and adultery. In the fifth verse, the Buddha says, pursuit of pleasure, lust for guzzlings, life unclean, blatant descent, not mills, but these are carry on. The Buddha goes on further explaining what is, what, 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 constitute the bad character. Backbiting, cruelty, betrayals, ruthless pride, mean stinginess, not mills, but desire, carry on. Further, the Buddha says, anger, conceit, revolt, guile, envy, bluster, pride, low company, not mills, but desire, carry on. This is the food that we should not take. You know, we should, we should not, uh, you know, uh, uh, resort in anger, conceit, revolt, guile, you know, of fooling people, and why bluster, pride, low company. The verse number eight goes like this, base living, slander, fraud, cheating, the tricksters, wiles, foul infamies, not mills, but these are carry on. This rage to slay and steal. These crimes are fraught with doom and end in hell not meats, but these are carry on. Now, the verse number 10 is very important and, you know, every single term of it is very, very valuable for us to understand. No abstinence from meat and fish, no nudity, no top knots, shaven crowns mm -hmm. or garb of pelt, no cult of sacred fire, no stark austerities to purchase future bliss, no rinsing, Burnt offering rites can cleanse the man who doubts. So very, very beautifully explained by the Buddha as to what constitute the, uh, you know, what evil character or a bad character. And the Buddha says, if even if you abstain from the from the meat and fish, if you roam naked, you know, these are these were the religious practices of the time. You know, no top knots. You know, you 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 you, you tie the hair in your in the knots, shaven crowns. The garb of pelt, you sit and wear the 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 the, the, the uh, leather of of tiger or you know uh, goats to to use it for your 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 meditation. Uh, no cult of sacred fire means yadne or yagas. No stark austerities to purchase future bliss. No rinsing, no ablution. Burnt offering rites can cleanse the man who doubts. So this is what the Buddha says. Buddha is very clear in terms of explaining what constitute the holy life. You know, it's not what you eat because, you know, you can be a vegetarian, you can be, you know, completely abstaining yourself from eating meat and flesh, but that doesn't make your character, you know. It, it might be good practice, 
to to abstain from eating uh, fish and 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 you know uh, meat but we cannot make the fetish of holiness out of it isn't it? it it is not what we eat decides our character that's what the buddha is saying so you know what is it that decides our character or our holy life and the buddha says that this is not what decides your character and he in the verse number 10 he says no abstinence from meat and fish no nudity no top knots shaven crowns or garb of pelt no cult of sacred fire no stark austerities to purchase future bliss no rinsing blunt offering rites can cleanse the man who doubts so this is not the way by which we purify our lives this is not the way by which we purify our our, our being so in the verse number 11, the Buddha points out very clearly, control thy sense. You know, this is the theme that has been underlying in all the Buddha's teachings. Isn't it? Control thy sense. Because the sensory consciousness can lead to a lot of difficulties, a lot of suffering for us. Because we, we are ensnared. We are, we, are, we are bonded by the senses. Isn't it? And we have seen in the previous classes as to how the, 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 the attachment to the sensual world you know, uh, creates a lot of suffering for us. Therefore, the Buddha says, the first thing Buddha says is, control thy sense, rule thy power, you know, take hold of yourself, take hold of your mind, hold to truth, be kind, you know, four words. And they are very enough for us to understand what does the Buddha want to convey to us. He says, control thy sense, you know, have a restraint of your sense, you know, don't let your sense go haywire. Rule thy powers. Hold to truth. Here, Baba Sambedkar has 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 uh, written the truth with capital T, which means the Dhamma. Hold to the Dhamma. Be kind. The most important characteristic of 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 being a, a, you know a practice practicing Buddhist is to be kind. Practice kindness. The saint who leaves all ties and vanquishes all ills is stained by not he either sees or hears. Isn't it? So a saint or a person who is trying to live the holy life, if they can control their senses, if they can get hold of their own mind, if they can hold on to the Dhamma, if they can be kind, you know, the saint who leaves all ties and vanquishes all ills is stained by nothing. He either sees or hears. So the, the mind of the saint is stainless, is pure, because it's not stained by what they see or hear or test or feel or, you know, you know, you know, in a sense through the uh, touch. So you see, this, uh, this, 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 this uh, subsection four is in a way uh, trying to convey to us as to what constitute the holy life and the fetish around food, what we eat. You know, uh, you know, outward washing, the rituals, or you know, um, uh, making sacrifices. This is not going to lead us to the holy life. The only thing that is going to lead us to the holy life, as the Buddha says, is the controlling the senses, ruling our own minds, hold to truth, be kind, and a person who leaves all ties and vanquishes ill wills, all ills is stained by nothing he either sees or hears. So the mind remains un unstained. In other words, number 12 goes like this. Hearing the Lord preach this lofty, saving truth, denouncing carry-on and sweeping hills away, the Brahmin meekly knelt and asked to be enrolled as Alsman then and there. You see, this is what goes on in the society even today. The people are judged on the basis of what they eat. The people are uh, judged on the basis of, you know, their outward appearances you know uh, by taking the uh, deep in the holy water people think that you know they will be purified by doing uh, this particular ritual people think that they will be purified and the buddha says that no this is not the way to be to be holy this is not the way to purify yourself the only way to purify yourself is to control your mind and and and, and remain completely detached from the sensory world you know in a sense so this this is the you know subsection subsection five which is similar to what we have just studied but but a little bit different in 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 its uh, in its in its teaching. So there was a Brahmin named Amagandha. 
and the name of uh, the, the the meaning of the word amaganda is the smell of you know carry on it's a smell of something some rot raw flesh and he was an ascetic who, who lived in the in the region of himalayas with his pupils and they ate neither fish nor flesh so they didn't eat any fish or flesh every year they used to come down to the to the villages nearby and they used to stay there and uh, they were asking for salt and acids the inhabitants of the village received them with honor and gave them hospitality for four months then once the place, blessed lord happened to go to the to, to visit the monks there the people on hearing the lord preach the, his dhamma became his followers and and when uh, the buddha interacted with them the, the villagers became the followers of the buddha that year even amaganda and his disciples as usual went to the villagers but the villagers did not show the same enthusiasm so after they became the followers of the buddha they didn't display the same kind of uh, reverence towards them so of course amaganda was disappointed to hear that the lord did not forbid eating fish and flesh you know the buddha was you know your food choices you are you are what you eat you know it it's it, it's of no consequences isn't it we have seen that you know there is a trend of vegetarianism in buddhism we have we know that in the in the mahayana countries particularly in the in the buddhist monasteries there they are very strictly vegetarian vegetarian so they don't partake any 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 uh, fish or flesh but the, these are the latter developments in buddhism but when the when the lord was you know alive he said that you know the the choices of 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 food is immaterial to your practice of the dhamma and uh, today we have we have been seeing around us the fetish around food people are being you know uh, categorized according to the fish, uh, food they eat but that is not what the buddha would approve of so uh, amaganda was disappointed to hear that the lord did not forbid eating fish and flesh wishing to have the matter confirmed he went to jetavana so he went to shavasti to meet uh, the buddha in jetavana where the lord was uh, then staying and said millet singula beans and peas edible leaves and roots the fruits of any creeper the righteous who eat these obtains obtain justly do not tell lies for the sake of pleasure this buddha had seen all this you know when he was living the life of austerity when he was living in in the in the jungle for so many years in the mountains for so many buddha has seen all these things and he has under the bodhi to realize as to what constitute the 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 holy life as to what constitute the nibbana as we have seen in the previous classes so here the here this amaganda is saying to buddha that millet singular beans peas edible leaves and roots the fruit of any creeper the righteous who eat this obtain justly do not tell lies for the sake of pleasure you thou ist whatever food is given by others which is well prepared nicely got up pure and excellent he who enjoys such food made of rice he eats amaganda you say that the charge of amaganda does not apply to me while eating rice with well prepared bird flesh now we we have seen the practice of the buddha of you know he he, he never used to cook you know the buddha buddhist sangha never used to cook they used to go to the villages for for for, for their alms rounds and whatever is being donated to them they used to eat they used to sustain themselves on on the food given by others they didn't care what kind of a food was given in their bowls you know they just ate whatever was given in their bowls and this is what is uh, you know the accusation of amaganda that the buddha is you know uh, enjoying the food made of rice and this is what is amaganda you know it's like you know this eating such kind of a food is like smelling smell of a carry on it seems that the, in ancient india the smell of the carry on was considered to be very bad even today you know the smell of the carrion is considered to be bad and that's what amaganda is saying so amaganda is now now requesting the buddha i inquire the meaning of this from you of what kind is your amaganda the lord replied taking life beating cutting binding stealing lying fraud deceiving worthless knowledge adultery this is amaganda and not the eating of flesh see the buddha is very clear in expounding his teachings you know he is very clearly saying what is amaganda what is the, what is the smell of the carry on he says taking life beating cutting binding stealing lying fraud 
deceiving, worthless knowledge, adultery. This is Amagandha and not eating of flesh. The Buddha further says, in this world, those individuals who are unrestrained in sensual pleasures, who are greedy for sweet things, who are associated with impure actions, who are nihilistic, who are of nihilistic views, that you know you do whatever, nothing is going to happen. This is a nihilistic view. Crooked, difficult to follow. This is Amagandha and not the eating of flesh. That is what the Buddha says. In this world, those who are rude, harsh, backbiting, treacherous, unkind, excessively egoistic, ungenerous, and do not give anything to anybody. This is Amagandha and not eating of flesh. Anger, pride, obstinacy, antagonism, deceit, envy, boasting, excessive egoism, association with the unrighteous. This is Amagandha and not eating of flesh. Those who are of bad morals, refuse to pay their debt, slanderers, deceitful in their dealings, pretenders, those who in this world, being the vilest of men, commit such wrongdoings, this is Amagandha and not the eating of flesh. Those persons who in this world are uncontrolled toward, towards living beings, who are bent on injuring others, having taken their belongings, immoral, cruel, harsh, disrespectful, this is Amagandha and not the eating of flesh. Those who attack these living beings either because of greed or of hostility and always bent upon evil, they go to darkness after death and fall into hell headlong. This is Amagandha. This is the bad smell. This is the smell of a dead flesh and not the eating of flesh. Afternoon from fish or flesh, nakedness, shaving of head, matted hair, covering with ashes, wearing rough deer skins, attending the sacrifice, sacrificial fire, nor all these various finances, finances in the world performed for immortality, neither incantations, oblations, sacrifices, nor seasonal observances purifies a person who has not overcome his doubt. Isn't it? So Buddha again, again categorically saying that, you know, with these sort of things that, you know, abstaining from fish of flesh, nakedness, shaving of the head, matted hair, covering with ashes, wearing rough deer skins, attending the sacrificial fire, nor all these various penances in the world performed for immortality, neither incantations, oblations, sacrifices, nor seasonal observations, observances, purifies a person who has not overcome his doubt. And the verse number 17 is just like the verse number 11 of the previous section, which goes like this. He who lives with his senses guarded and conquered and is established in Dhamma, delights in uprightness and gentleness, who has gone beyond attachments and has overcome all sorrows. That wise man does not cling to what is seen and heard. It is evil actions which constitute Amagandha and not eating of fish or flesh. You see, the Buddha is very clear. The Buddha is very clear in terms of you know what constitutes the holy life. It is not your outer appearance. It's not your outer things like abstaining from uh, fish or flesh. You know, uh, going naked and you know staying naked, or shaving one's head, or matted hair, or covering with ashes, or wearing rough deer skins attending the sacrificial fire, you know, if you do all these things, you know, they doesn't constitute a holy life. The Buddha says that a person who lives with his senses guarded and conquered and is established in the Dhamma, delights in uprightness, gentleness, who has gone beyond attachments and has overcome all sorrows, that wise man does not cling to what is seen and heard. This is evil actions which constitute Amagandha and not eating of fish or flesh. So by this, uh, by the reading of these two uh, subsections, it should be clear to us as to, you know, what is the Buddha's attitude towards the outward rituals or outward ways of, of purifying one's being. You know, the Buddha says that you can purify your being only by controlling your senses, by guarding your senses, by conquering your senses and fully established in the Dhamma the way it is, and delights in uprightness and gentleness, not attaching to anything whatsoever in the world. So I'm going to go on further and, uh, you know, uh, cover next uh, 
two as uh, uh, subsections which are not uh, lengthy they are very small so this uh, this this subsection is titled as not enough is outward washing isn't it if you wash yourself outwardly in some holy water or in some holy river that is not going to purify us so once the exalted one was dwelling at shravasti and the brahmin sangarava who also dwelt there now he was a cleanser by water practiced cleansing by water night and day he abode given to the habit of going down to the to bath so there was a person who used to go into the river in the morning take bath in the night you know he used to take bath so uh, when river ananda happened to see him doing this and he reported this matter to the buddha that there is a person there is a brahmin named sangarava who tries to clean himself by by washing himself in the in the river twice isn't it night and day so uh, now the buddha you know thought of going to meet this person and he went to see that person so next day at an early hour, hour the exalted one robed himself and taking out a robe and bowl went to the dwelling of the brahmin sangarava and when he got there he sat down on a seat made ready then the brahmin sangarava came to the exalted one and greeted him and after the exchange of mutual courtesies sat down on one side as he thus sat the exalted one said this to the brahmin sangarava is it true brahmin as they say that thou art a cleanser by water that thou do thou do dost practice cleansing by water abiding, abiding night and day given to the habit of going down to bath so you know you are bathing all the time you are taking bath all the time bathing all the time why do you bathe all the time this is what the buddha says to the brahmin sangarava as to you know you know why do you bathe every day in the morning and in the evening and um, he replies yes it's true master gotama now brahmin seeking what profit do you so practice the habit of going down to bed and so forth it is this way master gotama whatsoever evil i do by day so whatsoever i do i evil i do by day i get it washed away that very evening by my bathing so you know whatever evil i do throughout the day i go to take the bath in the evening and i i i wash away all the evils that i have done that day i get it washed away that very evening by my bathing whatsoever evil i do by night i get it washed away next morning by my bathing this is the profit i am looking for in being a cleanser by water and so forth then said the exalted one that's what the buddha replied but the buddha said the norm is the pool it is clear and undefined very succinctly put by baba sambedkar here you know this verse number 12 is very very prolific and very very important because the norm is the pool the dhamma is the pool the dhamma is like you know very pure water you know it's a very clear undefiled water so in in other words the buddha is saying that the dhamma has got the power to purify your being you know the norm is the pool if you want want to ever take bath or clean yourself you know you should immerse or dip yourself in the dhamma because the dhamma is the cleansing pool it is clear and undefined the verse number 12 just a few words but very beautifully explained the norm is the pull you know it's not the outward washing that you do in the morning or evening that is going to purify your mind that is going to cause you to have the purity of your character it is the immersion in the dhamma it is it is taking deep in the dhamma it is it is it is it is, it is like you know washing through the dhamma you can purify yourself hither when they have come to bed the masters of the lower are cleansed in every limb and pass unto the further shore the verse number 13 hither here in this pool of dhamma here in this ocean of dhamma here in this river of dhamma whosoever they are they have come to bed the masters of the lord are cleansed in every limb they are clean cleansed thoroughly and pass unto the further shore they attain to enlightenment they go to the other other shore paramita you know they go this they you know the other side of the of 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 freedom from all the suffering whereupon the brahmin sangarava said to the exalted one excellent it is master gotama may the master accept me as his follower from this date forth 
so long as life does last as one who has taken refuge in him. You see, the, 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 the previous three sections that we have been studying has a lot to do with how do we practice ourselves. You know, it has nothing to do with our outer world acts like, you know, sacrifice, sacrificial, you know, fire or ablution or in, indulging into certain kind of rituals. This is not going to help us to have the pure or a holy life. And, and you know, eating, uh, you know, flesh or meat and, you know, all sort of these things. They, as the Buddha says that, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are not comparable to, you know, controlling your senses, controlling your mind, you know, having complete faith in the Dhamma and being, you know, kind to other people. All these three uh, subsections of this part uh, four um, of the book four uh, are, you know, summarized in the last two verses that Baba Sambedkar has included here in, in, the, in the subsection seven. He says, what is holy life? So what is the holy life? And I think if we if we understand this in all, from all different uh, dimensions, what is holy life? Then we we understand the gist of of all the Buddha's Buddha's teachings. And here we go. What is holy life? Once while the Blessed Lord was on journey, he gave, as was his prayer practice, the following discourse to the bhikshus who were accompanying him. One paragraph, but. So clear enough for us to understand what constitutes the Buddha's Dhamma. Addressing the bhikkhus, the Lord said, O oh, brethren, this holy life is not practiced with a view to deceive people. We don't practice the Buddha Dhamma to deceive people, nor to seek their favor. We don't practice the Dhamma to seek favor, nor for purpose of gain. We don't practice the Dhamma to gain something benefit or fame, nor with the intention of getting out of difficulties in controversy, nor that one may be known as such and such by men. You know, we don't, we don't practice Dhamma to get popularity. We don't practice the Dhamma to get name and fame. Indeed, brethren, this holy life is practiced for controlling of body and speech, the cleansing of corruptions and detachment from the situation of craving. So why do we practice the Buddha's Dhamma? The Buddha has said very clearly that we don't practice the Dhamma for earning name and fame, any worldly gain, you know, because we are in, in, engrossed in something, something controversial. We don't practice the Dhamma for that. We practice the Dhamma for the sake of, you know, controlling our body and speech and purify our minds of all the corruption and detaching ourselves from all ensnaring, enslaving, you know, uh, objects and to seize our craving for 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 the sensuality so for this we practice the holy life so this is very clear exposition on why do we practice the dhamma you know where what what the practice of dhamma uh, you know constitutes of and the buddha has very clearly underlined all these principles in this in this particular subsection of the buddha and his dhamma so uh I, I, I urge you all to go on on reading the way we have been reading for the last one and a half years, uh, the, the, the Buddha and his Dhamma from all different angles. And to summarize today's point, number one is what, you, what we eat doesn't determine our holy life. You know, what we wear doesn't determine our holy life. What we, whether, you know, whether, whether we, 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 we take uh, deep in the, in the, in the so-called holy, holy river, that's not going to you know, uh, uh, you know, determine our holiness. If we wash outwardly, that's not also going to define what, you know, our purity of mind. So only by controlling our senses, by purifying our mind, by controlling our speech and body, we can, we can practice the Buddha and his Dhamma. We don't, we, we don't practice the Buddha's Dhamma for getting name and fame, to be, you know, known throughout the world. To be, you know, to have benefit, to have to seek favors from others, we don't practice the dhamma for that. We practice the dhamma for for its ultimate uh, ultimate goal to realize the dhamma, the truth. So I think what Baba Sambhakar has done, as he always does, very beautifully, is to lay before us a very clear presentation of the Buddha's teachings, and it's up to us to go back to the Buddha and his dhamma again and again, read it line by line, you know, uh, try to understand the meaning of every word. 
in that particular context of the sutta in which Baba Sambedkar has included that in the Buddha and his Dhamma. So I will stop here for today and we will open up for the question and answer. So anything, any questions? Jabim Namo Buddhai sir. Jabim. The seventh section, what is holy life? Yes. And the, and the last line. Hmm. The holy life is practiced for controlling body and speech. Hmm. And clean, uh, cleansing and detachment hmm. of such. It means if we control our body and speech, hmm. for that, we have to follow certain roadmap hmm. to control yeah. body and speech because body and speech will drive through thoughts hmm. and thoughts will generate it in the mind. Yes, 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 yes. Is that the roadmap, sir? Yes. Uh, you see, uh, the, 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 the the description of the roadmap is, uh, is you know, very much cleared by the Buddha in, 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 the, in the Noble Eightfold Path. So whenever we are talking about controlling uh, the uh, body and speech, we are talking in the realm of Sheila. Right? And yes, when we are talking about cleaning of corruptions and the detachment from and the cessation of craving, we are talking about you know, working on our minds, which means we are talking about samadhi, isn't it? So, in 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 other words, we are always talking about this very uh, the, the keynote of the Buddha and Dhamma, that is the sila samadhi and pradnya noble eightfold path. That is what we are talking about all the time. Whenever we are talking about about the path or what constitute the holy life, isn't it? So, I think. Uh, I think this is very fairly clear in terms of uh, the Buddha's description of 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 the of of a person in terms of body, mind, and speech. There is another way by which the Buddha, uh, you know, classified uh, the our 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 being in terms of nama rupa, and the four uh, the five skandhas. And there are a lot of ways by the Buddha has has, has tried to understand analytically what constitute our being. And uh, one of the way is body, speech, and mind. And as we have seen that. Uh, body and speech are not as subtle as mind because the mind is very subtle to to pinpoint to but we can we can we can see the the, the actions of the body and the actions of speech or even the actions of thought which goes on in our minds all the time so you see what 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 uh, this line is saying is uh, is actually summarizing in a very pithy sense the noble eightfold path right and uh, the path is not like A to B, B to C, C to D, Umesh. It's it's it's, yes, it's, it it's it's not a linear path. Yeah, isn't it? So you know, uh, it's 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 a lot of things. So sometimes you practice meditation. Sometimes you know your shila is going here and there. Sometimes you are you are you are having these deep insights. It's not that you know one thing leads to another. It's it's like it's not like A to B. Or B to C, you know, we have to understand that you know the the Buddha's uh, methodology is not uh, uh, to 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 explain things like that. You know, he will he will he will talk about body, speech, and mind. Sometimes he will talk about how to control your mind. Sometimes he will talk about insight, which has a liberating effect on 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 our minds. So you know, it's it's like it's like we we have to see for ourselves as to how how do we 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 can best practice. We can say, sir, okay, if we put ourselves uh, in, into the center, yeah, if we put ourselves in, in the center and in the circle, this eight fold path is surrounded, yes. equally distant from the center point hmm. and equally important. Very good way to uh, very good way of putting it. Yes, yes. I think it's a very thank good you, way of putting it. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Jabim, sir. Prashant, the site. Jabim, Prashant. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, according to this uh, uh, 
line uh, abstaining from fish or flesh shaving of head covering with ashes mm-hmm. attending sacrifice of fire so sir i want to know before the buddha were these practices there in the society and uh, because these uh, what i understand is these practices are more uh, into the hindu religion and uh, mm-hmm. hinduism is after archaeologically speaking it is after uh, buddhism yes, yes 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 so before buddhism in the society were these practices practiced by the people in the society hmm. uh, you see they, if you if you look at the history of the world you know there were a lot of these uh, practices which were going on in the world even if you look at the western world or eastern world world and so on and uh, you know so on and so forth so what we can say is you know uh, uh, as you said definitely that time there was no concept like hinduism there was no concept like you know the, that this religion is so young to say that you know it existed then but i'm sure that there were people who were practicing in a different ways you know they were trying to claim that they get purified for example here the reference to what is called the nakedness now who roams naked you know who for whom the practice of nakedness is important you know for the jains isn't it so if you look at the word digambar and shvetambar you get the idea so here the buddha is talking about the general outward practices is not talking about you know a particularly uh, the, you know uh, hindu practice or or you know he is definitely talking about the vedic practices when he is talking about attending the sacrificial fire because the buddha denounced the 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 the, the The, the 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 sacrifices the buddha said that by killing the animals you cannot get 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 uh, get uh, you know heaven so uh, i think uh, what is important here for us to understand because we don't know the this lot of these texts are written uh, after the buddha even you know in some of the commentaries he said that this 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 uh, particular amagandha sutta is the copy of what the previous buddha taught to some tis who was not a brahmin so you see what i'm saying is we 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 read the suttas uh, from from a historical perspective that's one way of reading but when we are looking it uh, looking at the sutta from from the practice perspective you know it should speak to ourselves so sometimes we also believe that if we if we if we pour if we take some holy water we might be purified or if we do some kind of uh, incant in, in incantations uh we might you know feel uh, we might uh, we might be purified so you know it's it, it's it's all reflects on on our holy life isn't it so i i i don't think that you know these are these are to be categorically called the hindu practices because uh if we look at the buddhist uh, suttas for example brahma jal sutta we see so many views prevalent there so many views prevalent there you know 60 views more than 60 views prevalent there in the brahma jal sutta so there are lots of kinds of views which we can even identify today for example uh, hedonism like materialism so people are sometimes believe that uh, um, you know make merry enjoy life you know that that sort of hedonism was also present at the time of the buddha and there were a lot of different schools which cannot be exclusively called the hindu school or you know this school or that school like today there are people who are of different views isn't it of 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 so here the view is that the outward thing is going to purify you but the buddhist view is that unless you work on your mind unless you control your senses unless you 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 try to you know restrain yourself you cannot have the holy life prashant uh, does it make any sense to you yes i got it Uh, sir can you put it uh, this way also uh, uh, at the time of uh, uh, buddhism means the, the buddha uh, uh, sermons were going on from place to places and the blindness he seen around the society mm-hmm. uh, through his own practices he has attained certain uh, level to clearly see this is useful and this is not useful mm-hmm. this is good and this is bad mm-hmm. and those were at that time uh, that communication was not so fast uh, mm-hmm. so that it could uh, spread in a minute or in a seconds right right right, right. 
and wherever he has gone he has seen some practices and the mal practices we can say and the blindness it was spread over the society yes. on that contrary and to cut all those blindfolds uh, blindness he 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 has uh, set the path ki this is the right way and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, eating uh, something will not make you holy uh -huh. means if you are practicing this kids if you i will eat this certain such thing that i will become a holy man Uh, such thing i i hope uh, th this might be the another scenario for this yeah 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 correct sir so by this we can also infer ki buddhism and buddha was uh, very rational and almost like yeah. a scientific person because whatever he to uh, told it's were very scientific and mm. without any preconceived notions True. and all rational things that is why uh dr baba saheb has uh, said in the article 51 ah key to instill scientific temperament true, true. is the uh, duty of all citizens of india yes yes rightly said prashant is there anything anybody would like to share or comment on before we end our class today if not then we will meet next week and we will be finishing this uh, this uh, section 5 so we will we have already finished the section 5 and we will meaning we will moving on to section 6 which is also very important and we get a very comprehensive idea as to you know what constitute the dhamma and the buddha sermons on 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 various aspects of dhamma so maybe uh, we will see each other next time thank you so much jai bhim namo udaya jai bhim jai bhim